Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I prepare for you a video tutorial on how to make a bone bustier using the rose cafe dress pattern. I will show you an easy way of sewing in boning, making foam cups, installing a zipper and the neatest finishing of the bottom. I will use a white silk satin, which is quite difficult to work with. I just want to make the process more challenging, but I can't recommend this material unless you are quite skilled seamstress. Also, I will need a lining, rigeline boning, mine is 6 mm wide, you can use a wider one, a separating zipper, which I'm going to shorten and will show you how, fusible tailoring interfacing, underwires, an underwire channeling medium weight foam for making cups man is covered with polyester on the one side and with cotton on the other side and the rose cafe bestiaire dress pattern link on the pattern is in description there are two types of rigeline one is cheaper and one is better quality. It is stronger and lasting. Both are not bad, but try to use a better one if there is such a possibility. To pick the right underwise, join the center front piece and the center side piece together. An underwire should have a similar round shape. As you can see, there is no seam on the front center in the original pattern. But I recommend you insert a bone there, to provide better support to the bust, especially if you have a bigger size cup. So I have printed down my patterns and I'm adding 1 cm seam allowance. This is not a fold line anymore. And to face the full fabric piece at once, in some cases it is much more convenient to do so. As I have sanded fabric and pin holes may occur, I pin my pattern pieces on the seam allowance only. I won't show the steps of pieces assembling together, you can watch it in the original instruction video on my channel. Also we should cut the bodice pieces from the lining and sew together. Also don't forget to iron on a stay tape on the top edges. I cut it from the interfacing along the non-stretchy grain line. When all the bodice pieces are sewn together, it's time to attach the boning. The rigeline boning must be stitched to the seam allowances so that it is covered by the seam allowance in the correct direction once it is pressed. Straighten the rigeline boning by pressing it flat with the iron using steam. Seam allowances on closed seams are usually pressed towards the center and side seam allowances towards the front. The front center seam will be pressed open. The seam allowances should cover the boning. Taking this into account, measure and mark 1.5 cm on the allowance from the top and the bottom edge. Measure and cut the boning in a proper section and then heat seal the ends. I'm making the ends rounded with my fingers while the plastic is hot. Also, there is an option to cover the rough ends with the tape. Stitch the origin to the seam allowance. Stitch very close along the first seam. Tuck 
tap stitch 5 mm away from the seam for all the layers of fabric and the ridge line. So the seam should look like this. Do the same with all the seam allowances. Mark 1.5 cm from the top and bottom edges. Be careful when you are stitching rigidly to the center. You should stitch to the one seam allowance only. Now we have to top stitch. Make sure the seam allowances are placed in the right directions. everything a little bit. If your fabric is delicate, maybe you need a pressing cloth. Now it's time to attach the zipper. I leave the bottom closure and shorten it from the top. Leave 1 cm from the bottom, place the zipper and mark the necessary zipper length, also leaving 1 cm from the top. Put the slider down. Now we have to remove the teeth. Using pliers, remove the teeth on the mark and 1 cm above the mark. Also, you can try to remove and place the upper stopper, but I failed on it. I was convinced that my zipper doesn't open further and decided to leave it without upper stoppers. Cut the zipper and heat seal the ends. We should fold these ends like this when sewing. It will be as a stopper for our zipper slider. Put the zipper and the back center with the right sides together. Put the zipper foot. Stitch along the zipper teeth. I have noted that I have to remove one more tooth to have one centimeter left on the top. Fold the zipper tape like this and stitch through the fold.
do the same with the second side. Make sure the back pieces are on the one level. Spread the zipper and that's it! And there is a lining along the top edge. If you are going to add straps, do it now. Carefully trim four corners as close as possible to the stitch line. Trim the cap seam And there is a lining along the top edge. If you are going to add straps, do it now. Carefully trim four corners as close as possible to the stitch line. Trim the cap seam allowances within every one centimeter. Be careful not to cut the stitching. Turn the bodice out to the right side and understitch the lining as far as possible to keep it from rolling to the outside. Also, understitch the round cup seam area as far as possible. If you'll do this step, ironing really now the corners will be much easier. Open the zipper, turn inside out the zipper area, flip the lining over from the top. Attach the lining to the zipper, Put zipper foot or position your needle as close to the zipper teeth as possible. Sew down the lining along the zipper teeth. Trim the corner. Do the same with the second side. Turn inside out all the corners. It is very important to have them as sharp as possible. Help yourself with the nail tips and make these movements. Press the tab so that the lining isn't visible from the outside. Trim 1 or 2 mm from the bottom of the lining. Turn the bodice inside out and pin along the bottom edge over the length of the bodice. Match all the seams. The boning will fold a little bit. Stitch 1 cm along the bottom edge, leaving a large gap on the center front. Trim the corners and turn the bodies to the right side for the remaining opening. Press the bottom edge so that the lining isn't visible from the outside, folding 1 cm of the lining to the inside along the gap. Hand stitch the opening from the wrong side of the bodice. Press 
as the bottom and the lining well. Top stitch 5 mm along the zipper. Press the zipper. Bodice is done. Now it's time to make foam cups. Sew the lower cup center pieces and lower side pieces together. I want to make the seam flat as possible. So I trim the seam allowance to 5 mm. Press the seam open. I've marked the bottom of the cup with tiny dots. Trim the seam allowances like this. This edge will be sewn with the upper cup piece. Sew the lower cup with the upper cup piece together. Over the length of the bodice. Match all the seams. The boning will fold a little bit. Stitch 1 cm along the bottom edge, leaving a large gap on the center front. Trim the corners and turn the bodies to the right side for the remaining opening. Press the bottom edge so that the lining isn't visible from the outside, folding 1 cm of the lining to the inside along the gap. Hand stitch the opening from the wrong side of the bodice. Press the bottom and the lining well. Top stitch 5 mm along the zipper. Press the zipper. This is done. Now it's time to make foam cups. Sew the lower cup center pieces and lower side pieces together. I want to make the seam flat as possible, so I trim the seam allowance to 5 mm. Press the seam open. I've marked the bottom of the cup with tiny dots. Trim the seam allowances like this. This edge will be sewn with the upper cup piece. Sew the lower cup with the upper cup piece together. Trim the seam allowance to 5 mm and press open. Press the cap over something round and soft. 
It is perfect if you have a round pressing hem. Remove the seam allowances from all the cup pattern pieces, except the round bottom of the cup, where the underwire will go. You should have these pieces with the seam allowances on the bottom. I put the pieces on the wrong side of the foam and contour them because it won't be accurate to pin and to cut pieces with the paper patterns on them. I cut only from the one layer of the foam. Flip the pattern right side down and cut the second cup. Check accuracy with the paper pattern piece. Check to mirror pieces together. I set my domestic sewing machine on the largest and widest zigzag stitch. I put the thickest needle I have. We put the lower cup pieces together, linking the edges. Press the cup over something round and soft. It is perfect if you have a round pressing hem. Remove the seam allowances from all the cup pattern pieces, except the round bottom of the cup, where the underwire will go. You should have these pieces with the seam allowances on the bottom. I put the pieces on the wrong side of the foam and contour them because it won't be accurate to pin and to cut pieces with the paper patterns on them. I cut only from the one layer of the foam. Flip the pattern right side down and cut the second cup. Check accuracy with the paper pattern piece. Check to mirror pieces together. I set my domestic sewing machine on the largest and widest zigzag stitch. I put the thickest needle I have. We put the lower cup pieces together, linking the edges. The needle goes through both pieces.
the same way attach the upper cappes. Cover the zigzag stitches with the underwire channeling. Stitch the underwire channeling on the cup side that goes to the body. Now we have the clean inside of foam cups. Put the foam and the fabric cup right sides together. Stitch 4 mm along. Make sure the cup ends are flat. Stitch 5 mm along the bottom. Press the cup with steam over something round and soft to form the round shape. Make movements like this. Let it dry on the round shape. Stitch the undivided channeling along the bottom edge, leaving a small tail. The channeling should overlap the cap raw edge on 1 mm. Stitch along the upper channeling edge. Now it's time to attach the cup to the bodice. This is my method of doing this. It is not like it's done usually in bras. I have been sewing bustiers and have found out that this is the easiest way to sew in the cups when we have a fully lined garment. Now if there is a stitch that is visible from the right side of the cup, approximately 9 mm from the cup bottom edge, and we have to attach the cup to the body so that the rounded underbust edges of the bodice overlap this bottom cup stitch by exactly 1 mm. Match the seams, line up perfectly and pin the cup sides with corners on the bodice. Top stitch on the right side 1 mm along the edge. These seams should overlay the previous channeling seam from the wrong side.
and we should make the second stitch. Top stitch is a cap line from the right side, 5 or 6 mm from the first stitch. This stitch should be along the bottom edge of the underwear channeling if we look on the wrong side. Be very careful going through the boning. Make tiny dancing stitches on the ends of the channeling and just cut the ends as close as possible to the zigzag stitches. Do it from the side of the cup, leaving the other channeling end on the bustier center open. Insert the underwise until the end. Make the same dance zigzag stitches and cut the channeling ends or hand stitch the underwire openings for a neater result. Steam the cup seam a little bit and the bustier is ready.